I'm very happy to be here to present Zikum. Uh, we are a technology platform company addressing biopharmaceuticals, enabling much better treatments or even new treatments in industry. Uh, the company is listed at Nasdaq First North. Uh, I am the CEO. I will give you a really quick ride here because it's only 10 minutes, right? Uh, so there's a lot more data that I can present. So I'm very happy to take questions and take discussions after the presentation. Uh, and we are unlocking the biopharma revolution uh, because as you all know, pharmaceutical industry has a big change from small chemical molecules to biopharmaceuticals to large molecules. And this revolution is now led by the mRNA, messenger RNA, all enabled and, and pushed in the COVID pandemic. Uh, this is really a new era in the pharmaceutical development landscape. Entirely new possibilities are opening up and unmet patient needs that could never be addressed before can now be addressed. But just like many biologics, the mRNA is very expensive, super fragile. Uh, it has shortcomings when it comes to product stability and for delivery forms. And this is exactly what we do. We enable new delivery forms and we address any stability issue for mRNA and for biologics. And we now have extensive validated data with our technology, Lamina Pace. Before we look into the technology, uh, a little school book learning here, uh, because we realized some people who are not in pharmaceutical development and, and uh, manufacturing don't realize the big difference. Chemical drugs versus biologics, what is feasible? So if you have the old case, small molecules, classical chemical synthesis, you produce your drug, aspirin in this case, you have a chemical molecule, it is super robust. Uh, you can spray dry it, you apply a very harsh process, mechanical stress, heat stress, interfacial stress. Uh, you can mill it, you can compact it, you can tablet it. You can basically run it over with a tank and you still have a good drug. Uh, this is small molecules. So any drug form is then possible. It's inexpensive, relatively. It's very stable, it's robust. The industry is moving to biologics. That's a very big uh, turn in the industry. It's very elegant. Uh, you get a microorganism to produce your drug, right? Uh, you design your microorganism, you make it express. Uh, you decide protein. It's a delicate biological molecule with uh, a specific sequence, but also a 3D structure. The only way you can handle this normally is in liquid state. So you have a liquid product, no processing is basically possible like you could do with all the old small molecule drugs. So you have this very fragile, really expensive drug. It needs cold storage or even freezing or even cryogenic, like for the mRNA. It's only applicable by injection. So you typically also need healthcare support uh, to apply this. Uh, so this something on the really big need for biopharmas on delivery and stability uh, for a number of reasons. And I will try to show you the value created, if you can address it. So we in Zikum, we are turning liquid biologics into thermostable dry powder. Sounds very simple, uh, but it's creating very significant value. First of course, of course the, the cornerstone is to avoid uh, the cold chain, the cryogenic handling. You make enormous cost savings and you save in sustainability to an enormous extent. On top of that, you have very significant operational gains compared to any conventional drying method. We have much higher yield because we have such a gentle process and we have lower operating costs. So those are very pragmatic gains. Then we have really sophisticated gains uh, for mRNA. We have uh, a number of uh, discoveries published where we can actually create an increase in RNA activity. Because normally everything you talk about in industry is how much do you decrease your activity when you treat your product. But we have cases where we can increase it because we create a better particle structure. So these three gains, it's all about cost. At the end of the day, this is all about money. Uh, a very dramatic cost reduction. So you can then open up for completely new drugs, smaller indications, much less expensive biological drugs. In addition to that, uh, we enable new drug forms because we have really sophisticated particle engineering. 
if you try to do lyophilization or old school drying, uh, there's no way you can engineer the particle with exactly the properties you want. Uh, that's something we have done. We are very actively pursuing this. We press released just a few days ago uh, on a collaboration in this field uh, with Copenhagen University, who are uh, world leaders in this field. And then, of course, this intellectual property as well. Since we have a very well protected technology, each taker of a license will get new patent time or a uh, new patent p possibility. So I think this is the key overall view you should take away today. Then I will try to speed through uh, more details on this. So what is the technology? Uh, this has been shown now repeatedly. So it's an invention from Karolinska Institute. Zikum has developed this for years. Uh, it is very efficient drying, enabled by the principle of mass transfer instead of heat transfer. Uh, our technology is both specific clever formulation and then this unique drying principle. Uh, it is applied in a module. It's a module rig for plug and play. So it can easily be implemented in an undertaker facility. And we operate by a licensing business model. Uh, for a number of years now, we have been running feasibility studies. We have tested any kind of biologic. It's working beautifully. Uh, we have, in the last 18 months, focused a lot on mRNA because this is the most demanding, most fragile entity. Uh, so this is also the highest value, obviously. This is where you really need this improvement. We have a lot of new data. I don't have the time to go into the data packages, but we have created fantastic points of proof in vitro, in vivo, uh, in partner trials with leading industry players. Uh, we also have this study with increasing mRNA activity, and we have the inhalation project ongoing. Uh, so, with more time, I would show you a lot of data from the inhalation project. But let's just say, uh, please read the press release and please come to me. I can explain more. Because it, this is groundbreaking to enable inhaled mRNA in LMPs. And we are invited to several uh, international consortia right now, because we have this ability, which hasn't been seen before. New intellectual property for the client. Uh, we have this platform. We have secured a lot of intellectual property. So we have filed a number of patents with, with a very large amount of claims to cover the technology in several perspectives. So we can offer the technology towards each modality area in industry. And of course, for each modality, we can sign many agreements for many companies uh, on the technology. So there's a very, very big market potential here. And uh, our business model, like I said, is licensing. Uh, we started revenue generation last year, signing a number of deals to do paid feasibility studies, which is on ongoing now. Uh, as soon as we sign a license, we can take milestone revenue. And this is important to realize the difference here because we can get very significant revenue long before the drug reaches the market. Because we get the milestones as soon as we start delivering our tech transfer package. Uh, and we have recent business milestones. Uh, we have soft funding achieved. We then have signed a number of agreements with world leading big pharma and biotech corporations. Uh, the most recent one I'm allowed to mention uh, it's, it's a very good player in California, Rico Therapeutics. They do targeted, uh, so organ targeting mRNA projects. Uh, so that's a fantastic collaboration. And then ending up with addressable market. So if we only look at Western markets, if we only look at the messenger RNA, and then add two vaccine platforms, and we count on just the royalty part of 1% to 2%, uh, without the milestone portion. Our addressable market is 600 to 1,800 million dollars per year uh, in the near-term market. And of course, this can be expanded a lot. So this is the tip of the iceberg, right? This is the tip of the pyramid I showed you. Uh, to end up, we have a really good board and management team. Uh, we are based here in Lund, I should mention. Uh, we have a high caliber team Locally here, I've been building, I have a very long background abroad. I spent most of my life in US and Germany building large corporations, building really large sales. 
And now back in Sweden, I'm building a really multicultural team here in Lund uh, with really good um, people joining from the industry to build this interesting concept. And I also want to mention, uh, we have come a long way. We have revenue generation. We haven't reached break even though. Uh, so right now, uh, there is a chance to join our journey, to take part in the rights issue. Uh, we published the prospect yesterday, uh, and I'm very happy to discuss that further with anyone here interested. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anne. Why is it so hard, you think, to make inhalable mRNA therapies? It's because mRNA only works if you put it into this super delicate package of lipid nanoparticles. So far, people are trying to put it in all kinds of <laughs> formulations, but right now it's the LMPs who work. Uh, but they are so dependent on, on water solution. Uh, so, so and, and some institutions we are in contact with now, they have tried for many years and given up. They, it cannot be done, they concluded. But then they met us. <laughs> uh, so now we have new collaborations on this. It's really exciting. Mm -hmm. yeah. Will your, um, with your technology, will you allow for uptake of drug after oral intake? That's our hope. We haven't come, uh, I mean, that's the next logical step, right? Right now we have generated a lot of good proof for the inhalation possibility, but the next natural step would be oral delivery. And that's something we are now discussing with academic partners. Yeah. Mm. How about the competition? We haven't talked about it for a while, <laughs> I feel like. What does it look like? Yeah, we monitor competition in all kinds of ways, patents, market studies, uh, industry forums. The key competition, there's a number of companies really struggling to try to make lyophilization work and also trying to make more stable lipid nanoparticles. So those, there are published attempts on that, but we have, I think I can mention, uh, this last quarter we have two big players coming back to us after having tested everything else. And they still then come back to us to discuss right now. Um, so there's no obvious competition, so to say. But of course, people are trying because there's so much value in this field. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What are your expectations with the ongoing project with Copenhagen University? And maybe tell us also about that. Could I mention something more? I, I get, think you should. I get half a minute. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, in Copenhagen University, there's a professor called Camilla Foged. Uh, she was the national authority for Denmark in the COVID pandemic. So she's a really high profile person on vaccine delivery, on vaccine design and vaccine delivery. Uh, and they have worked for a long time trying to figure out how to make inhalable biologics in, in general and then inhalable mRNA in particular. So we had a joint project that started in spring this year where we first investigated all the technical parameters. So we did, uh, we took mRNA uh, with specific formulation from Copenhagen. We took it to our facilities and tested it uh, and tweaked to, to try to get the perfect particle properties. And we did in the first project, uh, because it's not any longer about just getting nice spheres uh, in, in, in the dry powder particles I'm talking about now. Instead for inhalation, you want small parachutes to fly into your patient from the device. And we, we could create that even now for this really fragile LMP uh, composition. And after that, we have been performing animal studies. So we have three in vivo studies. Two of them are completed. Uh, one is intramuscular injection, uh, where we had perfect preservation of activity. And then the two second ones are inhaled product, and that's now ongoing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what do you think future-wise? Do you have uh, any sort of ideas what could be next? Yeah, we will be very happy to. I mean, we have a lot of partner dialogues. Of course, we will be very happy if, if we could also start a, a, an industry project on inhalation. That would be really fantastic. And we got very, very keen interest. I'm just back from Bio Europe. Uh, and uh, we got very keen interest for this, spe spe the peak, so to say, the edge of our technology's inhalation. Yeah. Nice to hear. Thank you yeah. so much, Anne Jenner yeah. from Sikkim. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>